Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and MBs, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I am your host, Andrew, and today we're going to be going over something that the Wild West made famous. It consists of these four cards, aces and eights, and it is known as the Dead Man's Hand. This was the alleged hand of cards that Wild Bill Hickok was holding when he was murdered by Jack McCaw in 1876. We will be going over the different variations of the Dead Man's Hand, the mysterious fifth card that always seems to be forgotten, possible other Dead Man's Hands, and the superstition to if you should play that hand of cards when you're gambling at a table. So let's find out. No one on the corner has to work like us. Hit me on my barn a prepaid wireless. We pack and deliver like UPS trucks. Already gonna hell just pumping that gas. All I wanna do is and uh ching and I take your money. All I wanna do is and uh ching and I take your money. So before we get into the history of the deadliest hand of cards, first we must rewind and go back to why this hand of cards holds so much notoriety. This takes us to the date of August 2nd, 1876 in Deadwood, Dakota Territory in a place called Nuttall and Man's Number 10 Saloon. This is where famous gunman and gambler James Butler Hickok, aka Wild Bill, was ambushed by Jack McCaw, who came up behind Hickok while he was playing cards and shot him in the back of the head. Needless to say, this left Hickok dead immediately, and in the words of OAR, that was a crazy game of poker. However, the murder that was committed by McCaw is where our story begins. Because next to where Hickok's body laid were five cards that presumably belonged to Hickok when he was murdered. The cards read as followed. The Queen of Hearts with a little bit of Wild Bill's blood on it. The Eight of Clubs. The Eight of Spades. The Ace of Clubs. And the Ace of Diamonds. Well, actually all of this according to Western historian Carl W. Brehan. His story reads that at the scene of the crime, the cards that presumably belonged to Hickok were retrieved by a man named Neil Christie, and these cards were then given to his son. That is who Brehan got this information from. However, the book named Wild Bill Hickok, Prince of Pistoliers by Frank Willstat in 1926 reads the hand consisted of the Ace of Spades and not the Ace of Diamonds. Same goes for Joseph Rosa, who is a fellow Western historian and author who wrote the book, They Call Him Wild Bill. It was the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Clubs, the Eight of Spades, and the Eight of Clubs, with the Queen of Clubs as the kicker. Black Aces and Eights are now the accepted history of what happened that day. But let's add more confusion to what we're trying to figure out here today. We've touched on the four cards that are most notable in this story, but what about that fifth card? You were probably paying attention to the aces and ace portion, but what about that fifth card? These are the possible identities of the fifth card that we previously talked about. Even though the authors and historians had pretty good information about the hand of cards that Wild Bill had during his death, we should probably ask someone by the name of Charlie Rich. Charlie Rich was a man who was actually playing with Wild Bill when he was murdered. Hell, he even dealt the hand of cards that Wild Bill was allegedly holding when he was murdered. And this is Charlie Rich's headstone. As you can see, the accepted history of the aces and eights is on his headstone, but the fifth card, the kicker, is actually a jack of diamonds. By the way, Charlie Rich is a fellow Ohioan. I just thought that I would point that out. Not much Western history in Ohio. Now let's proceed to the name of the hand of cards that Hickok was allegedly holding that day. The dead man's hand. That doesn't need much explanation. But this is the only hand of cards that could potentially be life-threatening. Well, 
Probably not. But this isn't the only instance of a dead man's hand to come out of the Victorian era, or even previously to us knowing about it. As early as 1886, the reference to the dead man's hand was three jacks over two tens. This is according to legend that stemmed 40 years prior from Illinois, where a judge used his last piece of property, his home, and bet it all on the hand of three jacks over two tens. But there is another form of the dead man's hand coming to us from the Encyclopedia of Superstitions, Folklore, and Occult Sciences, which came out in 1903, that state the dead man's hand is actually consisting of jacks and sevens. But we dug up yet another dead man's hand where in 1907 it was found that Edward Hoyle, an author and who is of Hoyle cards, and the Poker Hall of Fame said that the cards that made up the dead man's hand were actually jacks and eights. But I digress because the book of Wild Bill Hickok, Prince of Pistoliers by Frank Willstead, 1926, which we touched on earlier, that black aces and black eights is the proper and accepted history of the dead man's hand. Now that we've got most of the history out of the way and the different identities of the dead man's hand and different dead man's hand throughout the years, let's go into the superstition as if you were to draw these cards while you were gambling at a saloon or a casino. Should you play them? Charlie, my boy. Let's play some cards. I must state that if you get a pair of aces and a pair of eights, and a queen or jack or what other card that we discussed previously as a kicker that's a pretty decent hand of cards to gamble on the only thing is you might be gambling with more than just the chips or money on the table you might be gambling with your life yeah i'm gonna fold and that concludes the history and the depiction of the dead man's hand I know that there is a lot of speculation that comes down to it, but I do believe that adds to the lore of the Wild West, because four cards have given us at least 140 years of stories. Thank you all for getting this far into the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed today's video, or please leave me a comment. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed, but for those of you who have come across this video or channel, and you've yet to hit that subscribe button, think about doing so, because you're a daisy if you do.